Welcome to Weddings Unveiled, the podcast designed to help you build a productive, profitable wedding or event business. Here's your host, Angela Profit. Hi, y'all. It's Angela Profit, your event and productivity therapist, coming to you from the heart of Music City in Nashville, Tennessee. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Weddings Unveiled, professional tips and secrets on wedding planning and event design, where we take you behind the scenes of our past experiences in the event industry, what we have learned from them, and how they have made us stronger. This podcast will help you grow a productive and profitable business to launch you into success within the hospitality industry. Hi, y'all. This is Angela Prophet. Thank you so much for joining me on another episode of Weddings Unveiled. And today, I'm super excited to welcome Jared Tuchinski to be one of our guests on Weddings Unveiled. And Jared is the founder and CEO of PedalsDriven.com. And I recently learned about this company. It's funny because Jared had reached out to us and then someone else reached out to us probably like about a week apart. And we were crazy busy at the time, but I always, always, always try my hardest to get back to people to where it's not like a crazy, like, oh, you emailed me two months ago and like, I'm still alive kind of thing. But I will say like patience and persistence pays off. And so Jared and his business partner, I don't think they knew at the time, had both reached out to me about their company. And so after I learned about what they were doing and what they were offering, not only to designers and planners and brides who even want to do their own flowers, I'm like, I need to tell everyone about this, like my audience, the community, and both audiences so that they know that there are other options available to them out there. And so Jared, welcome to Weddings Unveiled. Thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm a big fan of yours. Thank you. I am excited for everyone to hear about your background because you have been in the industry for a long time. So give us a little bit about how you got on the wedding train and what you're doing now. Okay. Well, sounds good. Well, I got my start in the flower business. It was about 20 years ago. To be honest, it was a bit of a fluke. I was finishing up college. I was actually studying to be a doctor. I was pre-med in college. And through a fluke, a friend of the family who was a good friend of ours, he was a flower importer. I'd always known him. He was a good friend. I always you know, was interested in the business, but I never really thought much about it until he was looking to retire and he He was looking to sell the business. And so I kind of dropped my plans to go to medical school. And instead, my family, my brother and my father and I, we bought the business. And that's kind of how I got started in the flower business. And I was an importer bringing in flowers, mainly from South America at that time. And I kind of got bit by the design bug. And I said, hey, we're bringing in all these beautiful flowers. What if I, you know, I'd love to open up a retail space where I can kind of design and and kind of share that design with people. And so we did. I opened up my first shop about 18 years ago after a few years doing the wholesale. And from there, it grew up to three shops in the South Florida area doing, you know, weddings and events for all, you know, the South Florida elite for celebrities and presidents and royalty and everybody you could think of. And so I did that for about 15 or 16 years. I don't know if you even know this about it, Neangela, if if you don't mind me getting a little bit personal. Sure. In 2016, I got diagnosed with lymphoma. Oh. Cancer. Yeah. 22 pounds of tumors. So I, <gasps> yeah, it was a bit of a shock. So I went on chemotherapy. I went on radiation. And unfortunately, it affected the use of my hands. I developed neuropathy in my hands. It became very, very difficult for me to continue designing. And so I took a year off for treatment. And while I was doing that, my dream had always been get these high-end flowers into the hands of just regular people, not just designers, but just regular people out there, brides who were interested in doing their own thing, the DIY crowd. And so I used that year that I was kind of under house arrest, recovering to develop pedaldriven.com, which had always been a big dream of mine. And 
a horrible thing turned into a great thing. It turned out to be the best thing that ever happened to me. And out of that, Pedal Driven was born. That is an amazing story. Like, I love how you took something where some people would perceive it as so negative. And you're like, what opportunities can I do while I can't do this? And so thank you for sharing that with us. Well, no, thank you. I knew that if I couldn't design myself, I had to inspire others to because to me, that was very important to share that with everyone. Absolutely. I mean, what would you say as far as pedaldriven.com goes? Like, I mean, I don't know if our audience really knows like what is special and unique about your site. And it's not just a website, like there's all types of interactive things on there. So tell our audience and listeners a little bit more about why pedalsdriven.com is so unique in the wedding industry. Okay. Well, thanks. Yeah. Pedal Driven is unique. And you mentioned You're right when you say it's not just a website. What we're really trying to do is create a floral community, kind of connecting designers around the country, connecting people who love flowers, people who maybe even just as a hobby, people in the industry. So basically what we're trying to do is give access to some of these high-end flowers, especially out of Holland and Japan and some of these beautiful places that grow amazing flowers and trying to get them at reasonable prices into the hands of just regular people. So that's kind of what Pedal Driven is all about. And one of the things that makes us different is just the varieties that we carry, thousands and thousands of different varieties of flowers because we work directly with the farms. And that's one of the things that separates us. Because we're working directly with the farms, we have access to all of their inventories. So farms all over the world. And because we ship direct, we're not carrying an inventory. So no, the flowers aren't sitting in our warehouse like most wholesalers just kind of waiting to die and we're trying to push them on you. That's not how it works. Everything that you order is coming direct from the farms. And so you're getting the flowers faster, fresher, more varieties available because we don't have to take the risk of bringing in new varieties and say, oh, what if they don't sell? That risk isn't on us. The farms have all the flowers. So that way we get to carry all their products and it increases the amount of stuff that we can send to our clients and they seem to love it. That's awesome. I mean, I love the unique approach. For those of you who don't know anything about how the whole flower thing works, just a little bit of education there. So a lot of our clients, I have to educate them because they don't understand how it works, okay, with mm-hmm. flowers. So people say, and I'm Jared, I'm sure you hear this all the time, yeah. where I just like cringe and then I have to remember, Angela, be patient. They don't know what they don't know. But mm-hmm. it's like, they get a flower quote for their wedding or their event. And they're like, Oh my God, this is so expensive. (laughs) I can go to Kroger or Costco. And I'm like, well, it's not that easy. A. Mm -hmm. And so a few things that I tell them is that flowers are like children for like Mm -hmm. a week. You have to get them and like prep them, meaning taking them out of the packages and making sure that You cut the stems a perfect way so that they can absorb water and open over the next 48 hours. And depending on what types of flowers you're using and where they're coming from, that really matters. And then the other thing is like, you got to trim them usually like, especially like roses and things like that. And you got to feed them and then you got to put them together and then you've got to put them in a vase and then you've got to clean that vase and then you've got to deliver them. Then you have to spray them and make sure that they're beautiful and pray that if you have hydrangea and it's an outdoor wedding and 95 degrees in the South, that it's not going to die before the wedding's over. Mm -hmm. And then you have to break it down. And then we donate flowers or we reuse them for the brunch the next day if the quality of the flower is still wonderful. So there's really two major things that I feel like people need to understand. You're paying for the labor of making sure that the flowers are at its top best performance at your event. And number two, the design and the creativity that the person or the team is executing for you. It's not just going to Costco (laughs) and picking up a bunch, meaning like 12. Usually there's like 12 stems in a bunch. It's much more than that. And so what are your, like, what's your answer, Jared, when people ask you like, oh my God, this is so much. What do you say? (laughs) Well, you know, you have to address those concerns because, because like you say, a lot of people, they, they just don't know. And sometimes, look, I, there's a time and a place to go and buy your flowers at a supermarket. And, and 
I don't want to talk badly about it because sometimes that could work for you. But when it's for something like an event or a wedding that's just so special to you, you just don't want to take that chance. A lot of times the flowers in those markets, they've been sitting around for God knows how long. You know, who knows what happened to them? A lot of times people, you know, they could be sitting out of water. People decide, oh, let me take these flowers. I'll put them in my car and I'll walk around with them for half an hour. And then oh, I'll decide I just don't want them. So I'll just put them on the side. Then those could be, you know, you never know what you're going to get. And so that's one of the things I try and tell people. The other thing is just the consistency. Maybe you might have been at a supermarket six months ago and you saw a really pretty bunch of flowers at a good price, but try duplicating that. Try getting them to give you that same bunch of flowers when you need it next week. It's just not going to be possible. It's, it's not worth the risk. And, you know, our clients don't want to take that risk. They want to make sure that they're going to have the flowers that they want. They're going to have the variety that they need. And it's going to be there on time, fresh and looking its best. That's awesome. I love that. And so when you and I first met and you were just telling me about your process and what you have access to, I think I would love for you to share with our listeners and community, like where you can get things like really all over the place, acting as a liaison, like on the designer's behalf or on the planner's behalf, making sure that you have what you need and shipping direct. Can you share that experience with like kind of how easy it is? Yeah, well, we, we make it look easy, and, and now it's gotten a lot easier, but unfortunately, it didn't start off that way. I, I think one thing that maybe a lot of listeners don't know is just how many hands flowers pass through before they get to you. And so you're talking about the farm, to a local distributor, to an international distributor, to a, to a bigger wholesaler, to a smaller wholesaler, to a local wholesaler. Literally, sometimes, even, a, even as a florist, if you're ordering flowers, a lot of times those might have passed through four or five hands before they got to you. And so this idea that I try, you know, I had come up with it years ago when I first went to Holland about six years ago, I went for the International Flower Show in Holland because I just had to see all these new products that were coming in. And that's when I originally came up with the idea. It was, it was actually a bride who gave me the idea. She came to me with these pictures off of Pinterest of all of these celebrity weddings that she loved. And she said, I want to do this. And of course, uh, her budget did not match her dream and her vision. And so she had said to me, well, what if I buy the flowers from you and I make it myself? And I said, you know what? And I crunched the numbers. And I said, actually, if you wanted to do that, that might be something that you could make work. And so when I went to Holland, I tried to figure out, well, how can we get these flowers to people directly, try and cut out as many of the middlemen as we can, cut out as much of the time and the handling as we can. And get these hands into people, into you know our customers' hands. And when I went there six years ago, it was impossible. I went, I went to some of these Dutch farms. They told me I was crazy. They're never going to be able to do that. I spoke with Federal Express. They wanted to charge me five hundred dollars a box to ship. Oh my god! Yeah, it was it was just impossible. And and for a little while, I gave up on it. I said, I you know I, I love the idea, but maybe it's just not practical and it's just never going to work. But I didn't give up. And then, like I say, when I, when I got sick, I had some time and I used that time to negotiate with the shippers, to negotiate with the farm, to explain to them this kind of movement that was going on with flowers of people wanting all these products. You know, a, a lot of the country up until a few years ago might not have known about some of these flowers because they just haven't seen them. And so the Internet has just opened up such a huge world of people being able to see all these products and now they want them. And so you know, it was my mission to be able to get those flowers into their hands. And, and now finally, after years of trying, the logistics worked out and now we can make it work. And a lot of that has to do with working directly with the farms. That's awesome. I love that. I mean, do you have a favorite conference or any educational tips in the industry for designers and planners? Like if they wanted to expand their business? Because I oftentimes, I coach a lot of planners and designers because they're so stinking creative and do the most amazing Mm -hmm. things. But from a business perspective, it's a different type of a brain sometimes. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, that's the sweetest way. So how do you recommend like planners or designers like educating themselves more so that they would like learn about resources like yourself? Well, you know, one of the first things I would tell them is to listen to your podcast. because oh, I, yeah, I've, I've listened to a number of them. And I got to tell you, the information is great. You really help kind of bridge that gap. You know, a, a lot of us are, are designers. You know, some people, it's a very difficult combination to be a really excellent designer and a really excellent business person. A lot of times those two 
don't necessarily mix. And so kind of bridging that gap, I think it's just because we use different parts of our brains, but bridging that gap can be difficult. And for me, it's all about education. There are a lot of great, uh, a lot of great people out there, a lot of great designers that we also work with. I could name some names if, if you don't mind, you know, if you want, I can talk oh, about Oh, sure. That. Whatever you'd like. You know, we're big fans of people like uh, we were, you know, Ashlyn Carter out in California is great. If anybody wants to check her out, she's really good. Awesome. The, all the shows I love, my favorite sh- in terms of the flower shows, which is great because they give a lot of courses there. My favorite is, of course, the one in Holland. That's where I'm, the idea first came to me. Yeah. It's actually also where the name Petal Driven was born because when I went to Amsterdam, I was watching, I went to the flower markets and I was watching all these people deliver these beautiful flowers on bicycles. Everybody's riding wow. bikes over there. And so I said, you know, and that's when it hit me, pedal driven. That, you know, so that's kind of where the name was born. And so the, Holland always has a special place in my heart because to me, that's where some really beautiful flowers come from. I, I visited the farms. I visited the countryside. And that's inspiration in and of itself. Um, but if you go to these shows, there's a lot locally also. Um, I've been, you know, the shows in Chicago are great, Philadelphia. Miami, there are a lot of great resources. I'm trying to think offhand of, of some people I really recommend online. Who, who do you like? Oh, God. In terms of like education? Well, yeah. one thing that I was thinking of is the American, I think it's AIDF, like the designer and the floral. AIFD. Yeah, that. I'm really bad at acronyms. But I'll be going there in a couple months for their annual symposium, which I've never been. I'm so Mm, excited. And I'm going to teach a business class about technology and apps and how you can be paperless and how you can get everything backed up in the cloud. I mean, I just think that there's so much value in going to at least one thing a year And Mm -hmm. even if you don't do flowers currently and it's something that you want to look into or grow, like, you know, educate yourself. And then a lot of people get on YouTube and they watch videos. And that's one thing that I loved when I met you and started talking to you. You said, we want to do videos. We want to create this online educational platform Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because it's like, there's people out there sharing like here and there, but the consistency sucks. Yeah. (laughs) No. So, I mean, just to be very frank, but it's like the creative people, it's like during busy season, they are just in their groove, like doing things for their clients. And what I'm out there trying to tell people is like, that's the real stuff that people need to see. Mm-hmm. And so like set your phone up, get a $10 tripod off of Amazon and record yourself making things and mm-hmm. then put it on your YouTube channel and then submit it to pedalsdriven.com. And get information out there because it's just, um, we work with so many different types of flowers. Like my latest funny story, I don't know if you um, saw this video. I think I just did it on Facebook Live. Um, We worked with these poppies for Mm -hmm. this Wizard of Oz themed birthday party. Yeah, for a five-year-old. I'd never gotten them before. I I don't watch TV. Like I'd never really even seen the Wizard of Oz. I had to Google it. And what? I've heard of it. Okay. I've heard of it. But like, I just, I was an outdoors tomboy as a kid growing up. And so, um, I didn't even know. And so they come in this box and like, they're, they're green. And I'm like, I didn't order these. Like I <laughs> ordered something that was like pink and orange and red and colorful. Like I'm confused. So I Google it. And then I find this super crazy old video from Martha Stewart. And she was so stinking young at the time. <laughs> and she was cutting them a certain way and then burning the ends. Yes. With a lighter or like what worked that better for me was lighting a candle mm-hmm. and then burning the, I mean, I had no clue. And I thought, Okay, first off, why is the video that's coming up is like so ancient old? And B, if Martha Stewart's doing it, the shit probably works. <laughs> so yeah. I needed these, these heads to open up on these poppy flowers. Mm-hmm. And it worked. It didn't work on every single one of them. We had to pry them open the morning of the event. And then they died quicker. But it's like when you're busy and yeah. you don't really have a lot of time to think about it or prep. And of course, it was 2 o'clock in the morning the night before the event. You know, where I'm like, are these things ever going to open up? The other thing that I learned through a YouTube video was like a peony or peony, like however you want to say it. Yeah. 
like to get them to open up, like put them almost in like boiling water and it, they open, but then they brown and die quickly. But if it's like the morning of, and you run into things like this, it's like, what do you do? And I love that you're building a community and an online platform and encouraging people to do videos and submit them. And instead of people just randomly Googling through YouTube, rather they think of pedaldriven.com because they can find anything on how to do it, especially when you're in a bind, right? I yeah, mean, absolutely. absolutely. And we're, and we're trying, we're compiling all those videos and care tips. So you'll have them in all one place that you could come to pedaldriven.com. Take a look at our videos, not just design videos, but care videos. Like you say, by the way, just so you're, so the listeners know, the reason the, the poppies respond to lighting that is if you ever, the stems of the poppies have this very skinny, like almost like a fiber. You can pull it out. It's almost like feels like strands of cotton that you mm. can pull out of the stems. And when you light that, that lights up that fiber throughout the stem and it helps the flowers to open a little bit quicker. And then just another, while we were talking about peonies, another quick tip for peonies, one of the things I like to do with them is I, whenever I get them, I used to get them into the shop. I'd hit the bottoms of the stems with a hammer. You just hammer what? away. To, yeah. <laughs> wow. It's crazy, but it works. It and makes it makes them open? Yeah. It helps them to open. It helps them. And it helps them to last longer and, and live healthier and actually drink better. The, f- the stems of peonies are very fibrous. And yeah. so it, it, the same thing works with a lot of uh, different types of woody stems like lilac or forsythia branches or stuff like that. You can actually just kind of crush those with a hammer. And they respond really, really well to that because they're because they're drinking out of the full stem. That is so cool. Like I've never heard of that. What other tips do you have for us? <laughs> That's well, so there, neat. There's all kinds, of, and you can you can take a look at the website to see some of them. But like you you had mentioned hydrangeas, for example, one uh-huh. of the a lot of times hydrangeas do have a tendency they can shrivel up, and that's because. Number one, they drink more water than almost any other flower. That's why they called hydrangeas. They need to be hydrated. So a lot of times, if they're not getting that proper hydration, you'll see that shriveling. E- one of the easy ways is really just to recut it and put it back in the water because that'll open up whatever clog there might have been in that stem. That'll help open it up. Another little trick is that you could actually, a lot of people don't know that hydrangeas don't just drink from their stems. They can actually drink from their flowers as well. So sometimes what I used to do is take a hydrangea that's kind of getting a little shriveled up and actually dunk it head first and let it kind of soak in water for a couple of minutes. And it'll actually get in some water through the petals, not just through the stem. And that'll help them perk up too. So we had an event where she just wanted all hydrangeas and then the phalaenopsis orchids, mm-hmm. which are beautiful, beautiful for weddings. And I had a girl that was helping us and I love our interns. And it helps me become a better leader and a better communicator because sometimes like it's in my head, but I forget to say it. And so I remember I asked her, I'm like, get the spray jug and go spray, you know, all the flowers because mm-hmm. someone had told me that it was really hot. It was, it gets stupid, stupid hot here in the yeah. summer. And we were in Nashville and the phalaenopsis orchids, I mean, aren't they more of like, I don't know, are they a tropical flower? I don't know. They're, but, yeah, they're, they're naturally tropical. Yeah. Yeah. And so forest. she goes and sprays. When I said all the flowers, like she took me literal and she starts spraying the hydrangeas down and spraying the phalaenopsis orchids down. And so the next day I come in and the orchids are like closed up. They have brown spots on right. them. I'm like, oh shit. And that's just not something you can like run to the wholesaler and buy, at no. least not in the South. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And so we, thankfully, this is before I met you, Jared, but we yeah, could have called me. Yeah. I mean, thankfully we had a relationship. I mean, we called all around town. I'm like, okay, so our backup backup plan is to go buy single stem orchids at Whole Foods at the grocery mm-hmm. store, which by the way, those potted plants are freaking expensive. Yeah. And so we had a plan. I mean, we found more, but it's like, I wasn't going to charge the client for that. I mean, it was my fault for not communicating, like, don't do that. And so I would just say, like, when you have people helping you or if you're prepping flowers, like, do your homework before you just, like, every flower is unique. Their care is unique. And also the climate control. Mm -hmm. I've also had flowers come in where I think they're just in shock because it's winter and it came from like 70 degree weather and like they're shipping 
And it's just, it ends up being very stressful <laughs> Yeah, as a floral designer. So it can be. I mean, what would you say, like, do people that are getting flowers from you presently, like, do they share stories and share videos? Like, what do your clients love about what you're doing right now? Yeah, they share stuff all the time. I think one of the, some of the things that they love are just, number one, the variety. I, that's one of the things we really pride ourselves on, the variety and the quality. Like, you know, thousands and thousands, you know, tulips, for example. Everybody says, oh, it's springtime, tulips. And I'll get people say, oh, we, you know, we want some pink tulips. Okay, well, we sell, I think, maybe 40 different varieties of pink tulips. So sometimes it can get a little confusing just because we have so much variety. But the designers love it because you get to see these pictures. You get to get exactly the color that you're looking for. There's no guesswork. There's no wondering what are the flowers going to look like when they get here. The pictures are there. You see exactly what it is that you're going to get. They also love the pricing. You know, because we're shipping them direct, the prices are really great. We offer designers discounts through our program that we call our Driven Designers Program. You sign up for that. You get great discounts. We offer free shipping to those designers, which is also kind of unheard of in the wholesale flower business to be able to ship those flowers for free. And so that's another thing that people really love about when they order from pedaldriven.com. Uh, and the other thing is just the, the help that they'll get. We're here. I'm a designer myself. I'm a, uh, I lead the company and we're all designers here. And so to us, it's just also about helping people, people that need a little bit of extra help. They have some questions. They need to be kind of walk through it. We're here to help through our videos, through us over the phone, through email, whatever you need, we're here to help. That's awesome. I mean, what I love is like, your willingness to help and you get it. So like, for example, if I'm like, oh, we need this kind of flower in February and it's like, well, that's not really in season, but I can get it. But as far as the care goes, make sure it's like X, Y, Z. And mm -hmm. some people like they're not going to take the extra time to be yeah. proactive to actually like help people out. And I will say, I'm not going to say who it is, but we have had some large, large companies where we order a lot from them and then we get into a bind and all of a sudden it's like, A, we don't have their cell phone numbers. B, it's like they're closed mm -hmm. and their 800 number is like forwarded to, you know, their voicemail service. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I, it, ha it hasn't happened that often, but in 2010 in Nashville, our town flooded right. and a it, it was bad for, for, the, for flowers. And then one other time, the floral... Um, shop that we used to use down the road from our office, they, I don't know if it was like struck by lightning. I don't remember exactly how the power just went out, but the cooler, the big ass walking cooler, um, it just completely went out overnight. And so they had pre, you know, er, made all these bouquets of boutonnieres and like everything was pretty much dead. Oh, wow. And so you know, the owner called and texted and she's like, oh my God, I'm freaking out. Like we're going to go around town and go to the wholesalers and pull together what we have to pull together, but we're going to be late. And um, thank God that like all her weddings that weekend were with planners that she had a good relationship with. Mm -hmm. Cause it's like, what do you do? Yeah. And we actually bought a plane ticket for a box of flowers to get here wow. from Miami. I mean, it's just crazy behind the scenes, the things yeah. that we do. And then the bride never knew, ever. Yeah, no, that's ever. the thing. Is that if, they, if they had any idea what we have to go through to mm -hmm. make all that work, it's, it's, I always used to compare it to people, you know, if you're in the middle of a kitchen and you're, and you're baking a cake and, and all you see is a bunch of cracked eggshells on the floor, you're going to say, oh my God, what's going on over here? But, but you have to, it's that big mess that leads to the beauty and it's the behind the scenes that the brides never know about. That's for me. I've also, as, as a designer myself, we have had tons of parties and weddings where everything, just everything goes wrong, whether it be the weather, whether it be the flowers, whether it be whatever that you, you have to expect the unexpected. You have to think on your feet. That's one of the things I love about you also is, is just the willingness to never give up, no matter how bad the situation <laughs> seems. You're instead of kind of just, putting your hands up in the air and saying, oh, you know, sorry, which is what a lot of wholesalers will do to you. You mm -hmm. know, they've never been in your shoes. So they, they don't know, or they'll say, oh, just tell the bride, you know, you can't do it. They, they don't, they just don't get it. For us, that's not an option. Everything needs to be perfect. So I love that you think on your feet and you're always saying, well, how can I get this to happen? Even if it means buying a plane ticket for a box of flowers to come in from Miami, you're going to get it done. Oh my gosh. Absolutely. Absolutely. 
I mean, what would you say is like the biggest challenge like in our industry of florals and designers? I mean, I know there, you know, could be more than one, but what are the top challenges that you feel like we're facing? You know, I think some of the, cha- you know, for me, one of the biggest challenges is, you know, pricing, you know, p- the budget that people have, you know, their vision as it compares to what their budget is. And so they might come in and they might have all these beautiful dreams and pictures of flowers and arrangements that they want to have, but they just, they don't understand that the budget's not, not going to be able to fit that. They want to have the planner that's going to have everything under control and, and do it, but they, they don't want to spend the money to be able to make that happen. And so that's one of the things we try and do at Petal Driven is try and bridge that gap between this dream wedding that they want to have or these dream flowers that they want to have and what their budget's going to allow. So for us, that's, that's a big challenge. The other thing is just getting you know, the flowers and the quantities that you need and, and the varieties that you need, things that are off-season. You know, we work with farms that are all over the country. So peonies, you, know, you had mentioned earlier, for example, yeah, they might not be available in Holland, but maybe it's a, a season going on in Chile right now or in Japan or in Ecuador, depending different, or in Israel, we bring in a lot of beautiful peonies. So it depends. You, you have to kind of have your finger on the pulse of the market, know where everything is. You can't always have just one source. You can't put all your eggs in one basket. You have to be able to have relationships with people that you know that if something doesn't work out here, you've got a plan B and a plan C and a plan D, E, F through Z if necessary to to get the job done. What I love about y'all's website that just stuck out at me when when you first contacted me was everything was broken down by color Mm -hmm. and a creative person, but also a very um, OCD person, yeah. and, but with some ADD. If I w- need to look at purple or if I need to look at yellow, you know, you just click on the shade. And mm-hmm. I've been like finding myself whenever people say, well, what about this? And what about this? I like use that as a reference to see like what's available and what I can get. And then we've also started to build like these little design boards. And yes, most of our clients have Pinterest, but I will say not every client has Pinterest and Mm -hmm. I don't want to shoot in the dark ever. So I do have to go back and resort to actually putting inspiration boards together. And then the floral designer that we use also does that to make sure we are all on the same page. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like... That's one of the things that I love, love, love about the website is, you know, the whole color chart. Thanks. What are your thoughts on like mock tables and like mock bouquets and showing people an idea of what their design could look like about a month or two before the wedding? Do you find that a lot of people contact you for that or that's not something that you recommend? No, I, I do recommend it. I think it's okay. very important um, because if if nothing else for the peace of mind, you know, I, I've worked with a lot of brides where they would have this vision. I would know as the professional, I would know that everything's going to be beautiful. It's going to be exactly what they're going to want. I know that in my head. And so for me, I'd say, oh, it's no big deal. But you have to understand not just where you're coming from, but where they're coming from. And a lot of times brides, especially they, 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 a lot of people, they don't know that they're going to love it until they see it. And so they need that peace of mind sometimes to be able to say, okay, now I've seen what it's going to look like. Now I feel comfortable. Now I know I'm in good hands and everything is going to be fine. But sometimes it doesn't hurt to have that little extra peace of mind where you can actually see what something's going to look like before you make it. And that's one, one of the reasons we have all these DIY videos up on the site with pictures. It'll show you what the centerpiece will look like. And so there's no real surprises. You know exactly what you're looking for. You know exactly what you're going to get. And it kind of helps people visualize it. Some people are better at kind of, I think you're better at visualizing kind of, you could look at an empty space and in your mind you can see, okay, well, this is going to go there and that's going to go there. Not everybody has that ability. And so for them, it really is helpful to be able to have something that they can see, look at, and actually get a real feel for it so they know exactly what, they're, what to expect. Yeah. Would you say, um, I mean, again, both of us, we've been in the industry for a long time. And how would you say that, things have just changed? Like what are the trends coming up for this year, the following year? Like what do you think is changing trend-wise? Ooh, trend-wise, well, I think it's just a lot of new varieties coming in from all new different kinds of farms and new countries that just weren't available before. I'm loving 
You know, sweet pea coming in from Japan right now is incredible. I'm loving some of the different colors, the new varieties of roses and garden roses that are coming out right now. Some of the new tones with people, especially for weddings, not being as afraid as they once were to use color, which I really love. Weddings aren't just all white anymore like they might have been when I, you know, when I first got into the industry 20 years ago. That's what everybody was doing. Mm-hmm. You know, so I think people are getting a lot more creative. And I, I think it, all, all the trends that I'm seeing, I'm loving. I think it's really moving into a much better space where there's a lot more freedom to do what you want to do. You know, brides would always come to me and say, well, well, what, what, do pe- what does everybody do for a wedding? I say, it's not about what everybody does. <laughs> it's about what you want to do. This is your day. And right. so I, I think that that's starting to become, that's the trend I, I like the most is that people are starting to say, well, it, it, I don't have to kind of go with these societal norms of whatever, what I think a wedding is supposed to look like. I can be creative. I can do different things. I can use some of these new colors or new flowers. And that's great. Yeah. Do you, are you finding that just with Pinterest, because you and I both started when none of this existed, yeah, no social exist. media or anything, are you finding that people are actually paying more attention to what the flowers are going in or on, like as far as vases or candelabras or gold or silver or glass or pottery? Like, do you get a lot of requests for, hey, like these flowers are great, but what should they go in? And do you, do you help with that? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think the container or the vase that the flowers are going to go are very important. And we actually work with where it's one of the things we're expanding on the site. We do sell right now a lot of vases and containers that, that people can go on and check out. But, and we also have a lot more coming. But I do think that that's important. It's not just about the flowers. It's about the vase. It's about the presentation. It's about the table setting and the linens. It all comes together to kind of create this perfect picture. And that's what we're doing. It's not one individual thing. It's kind of the, the, the conglomeration of all these different products together in one, one design to really make it all come together. Because you're not just looking at one individual flower or one individual centerpiece or even one individual table. It's about how the whole room comes together. And a great designer or a great planner is going to keep that in mind. And they're going to understand that we're not just looking at, at a little micro picture of what it is. It's, it's all about the big picture. And you have to have all those moving parts in your head kind of going on at the same time to really make it all come together. Absolutely. I'll walk into an empty room and like I can listen to my clients adjectives, like what they describe as how they want their party to feel. Mm -hmm. And then I love explaining like the logistics because that is important to make sure that, you know, it looks amazing. That's why people come to us is because they want the wow factor. They want Mm -hmm. it unique. And we like to brand every event that we do, but I can close my eyes and mm-hmm. see it where, like you said earlier, not a lot of people can do that. Yeah. That's, I think you, you have a unique ability to do that, but, but I have to tell you, not everyone can do that. And so we have to be sensitive to that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I mean, with, again, with Pinterest, I feel like people are valuing and appreciate more now the creativity that people I can think so. offer. Where it's like, I don't want to walk into a ballroom and have 30 round tables that look the same. Like that's a boring. And a lot of people think that we'll say, well, let's do three, four or five designs. I'm like, yes, it can come down to how much you've allocated per table for flowers. But I don't really want to look at it that way. I want to change Mm -hmm. their mindset and let's look at it overall. And like, Mm -hmm. where are the wow factors? And like being in the South, we always try to have like the head table or the sweetheart table, which means like, it's just, you know, two people sitting there. Mm -hmm. Let's make some special wow factors and spend your money there, invest your money there, because that's where a ton of photo video is happening. Mm -hmm. I mean, let's be honest. And then if you have a few key wow factors, then everything else around it can be a little bit more simple. But it's like, again, looking at that big picture, like, like you said. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's what I love about your videos is, is the wow factor. <laughs> it's like I said, I'm a huge fan. But I love that. And I love that you're able to do that and show people, well, here, well, if you do have a budget that's not going to allow certain things, these are the key areas that you might want to spend those in. Because once, you know, once the wedding is over and all you're going to have are those memories, you want those memories to be wow. You want the pictures to be wow. And you're great at steering people in a direction that they can have not just for the day of to have that wow factor, but, but ongoing forever in pictures. Yeah. What are your thoughts on the perception of if you get a bride that calls or emails or comes in 
and they're like, Hey, I just want a ton of candles because it's cheaper than flowers. Like what is your response <laughs> to that? <laughs> well, well, you know, look, every, Let's everybody, <laughs> To me, it's it is all about education, and and look, I, I don't. I, everybody wants what they want, and so I always try to take somebody's vision, and I and I try and use that as kind of a, a stepping stone for me to kind of work off of that and say, okay, well, how can I take this kind of vision that they have and make it into something that they're going to love? So if somebody comes to me like that, depending on the person, you know, I'm going to try and steer them into a way that I think a lot of times they're saying that out of not because that that's what they want. But maybe that's that's what they think that they can afford. Exactly. They, you know, and so a lot of times you can educate them. To me, education is key uh, in the flower business because it's one thing that a lot of a lot of brides or customers they come to us they don't know. And when somebody doesn't know about something, you you kind of feel very awkward about it, and you're afraid to spend money on it. You're afraid because you know very few other things that we buy in life. You you walk into a you go to a restaurant for dinner and you know what all the food is. You know what it's going to be. You go go into a clothing store to buy a new outfit and you can see it and you know what it's going to be. But flowers, there's just so much unknown for people that, that don't have a background in it. And so because they're so, they, they just don't have the education in it, they're, they're afraid and they're afraid to right. try new things. And so they're looking for somebody to kind of educate them that can give them a little bit more direction. Because as soon as you're educated about it, now it starts to just make a lot more sense. Before it was all, you might have been well been in a Chinese, but now right. it's all starting to make sense. And that's when you have a foundation that you can start showing them some of these other things. And, and essentially, you're going to show them some stuff that they're going to love. Yeah. I, I just, I don't know where the concept came from, where clients are like, oh, isn't it cheaper to just use candles? And I think that was a guy in the candle business that said. Oh, oh, my God. I mean, even like recently, um, we work in a lot of historical venues and now they're just like completely banning candles. You mm -hmm. have to use these artificial slash mm -hmm. fake equals ugly type thing in my opinion. Yeah. There's one company that I've seen at market that actually like it's decent, but it's like still not a real yeah. candle. And so, but what these clients don't understand is all the glassware because of the fire codes, things have to be in glassware. That's a taper candle, which is like a skinny candle, mm -hmm. pillar candles that are like the fat chunky candles, and then you've got floating candles. There's all these different things, but it takes containers and glassware. You have to clean it. You have to break it down. And so every once in a while, I get clients, they're like, oh, we went garage sale hopping and we're going to do this <laughs> and da, da 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 And I'm like, okay, well, who's going to bring it? Who's going to set it up? Who's going to clean it? Who's going to break it down? Who's going to deliver it? Who's going to take it back? And again, they're like, once you add up the labor and the glassware needed, yeah. you might as well, if you love flowers, you might as well have just had a bunch of flowers. Yeah, absolutely. So that's one of the things that we often hear is, well, they're cheaper. So we're just not going to do flowers. I'm like, well, do you like flowers? Oh, I love flowers. Right. <laughs> Like, well, those are yeah, flowers? those are common misconceptions that people think, oh, these can be cheaper, or this, you know. Even when it comes to certain flowers, some people have a favorite flower, but they they won't even tell me about it because, yeah. oh, we want to do this because that's cheaper. And meanwhile, they don't even realize that they could be the same price, or maybe even their favorite flower could be more cost effective. They just don't know. So it's it's very important to kind of share with your planner or with your designer. Just leave it all out on the table. Tell them everything, and kind of let them help you. And, and a lot of times you'll be surprised at, at what you thought was the, a, went a certain way really isn't really the truth. And it, it, once you know all those behind the scenes kind of the truths, then you can kind of steer them in the right direction. Absolutely. Like the other thing I'll say is you know, we have girls who are like, oh, I hate hydrangea. I want a bunch of roses, but they don't understand like a large healthy head of hydrangea that is you know, one stem, it might take eight or nine mm -hmm. roses to get that full look. And so you have to know where the value's at. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like you said earlier, if something's really important to someone, you try to work with their budget and what they've allocated for something. And even if you use a few of them, like in their bouquet or their head table or their sweetheart table, where or their cake, like where it matters, but it doesn't have to be everywhere. Like exactly. that's what I it's love. It's all in the details. It's all it's 
all in the details. So yes, you don't have to look. And I'm not, I've never been a big fan of loading, loading up, you know, going over, over the top. For me, I like sometimes, you know, the simple, elegant type of a feel. Uh, you know, there's a place, you know, a time and a place for everything, but you're absolutely right that they have to understand that you don't have to overdo it. Sometimes just it's the details that matter. Yeah, absolutely. Well, where can our listeners find you, Jared? They can find me. Well, they can find me at our website. It's www.pedaldriven.com, which is pedal with P-E-T-A-L, driven.com. They can reach us on our phones. It's 888-PEDAL-29 or 738-2529. They can check out the website. We're going to be creating an exclusive coupon code for the listeners of this podcast. It's going to be Weddings Unveiled. And it's going to get you 10% off for all the listeners out there. Exclusive love to you for being, just being a listener of Angela because we love Thank her so much. Thank you. Thank you and, so much. And you can give us a call. You could, I'll give you out my personal email address too. If you ever, if you have any questions that you want from me, you need to talk about anything, you have any questions, you can reach me at Jared, J-A-R-E-D at pedaldriven.com. And I answer every single one of my emails. I'm here to help. I have a background in design. So if, if you have any questions, you're planning a wedding, you need some help, I'm here to help you. That's awesome. I love the customer service. Love, love, love it. Well, that, to, to me, that's, that's the most important thing. And it's one of the things that separates us. I, look, I can't help necessarily everybody myself, but we've got a whole team of people just like me. I'm, I'm maybe the least talented on the team. So you, you can take advantage of that. We've got some great people here. So call us, email us, check out the site. If you got any questions, we're here to help. That's awesome. Well, Jared, thank you so much for taking the time to be on Weddings Unveiled. So much fun. Oh, we always have fun, right? (laughs) Yes, yes, we do. Well, thank you to our community and our listeners. If you learned something out of this podcast, please share it and tell your friends about it. And if you have the opportunity to use pedaldriven.com, make sure that you share it on social media, share it on Facebook, submit your videos to Jared and his team. I'm sure that they want to be featuring those too on social media. Absolutely. Yes, please. Awesome. Well, thank you again, Jared. And everybody have a great day. Thank you, Angela. Bye, everyone. If you found this podcast helpful, please share it with other wedding and event professionals. Thank you so much for listening. Be sure to tune in next week for more tips on how to grow your business. And if you have a question or an unresolved issue that you want guidance on, connect with us on AngelaProfit.com. For more valuable resources, again, visit the website. And until next time, remember to stay productive and profitable. You've been listening to Weddings Unveiled with Angela Profit. Join us next time for more insights to help you build a productive, profitable wedding or event business. For more great resources, head over to AngelaProfit.com.